Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Realtree, Hoyt Archery, Muddy Outdoors, Fuse Accessories, Frigid Forage, Trophy Rock, Scentmaster, Cabela's, Rocket Broadheads, TrailCamPro.com, Bloodsport Arrows, Redneck Hunting Blinds, Scentlock, Scott Archery, Yeti Coolers, and Nikon. Welcome to Midwest Whitetail. We've got an exciting episode for you this week, but before we get to that, I'd like to wish you a happy Thanksgiving as we spend this week looking back over the many blessings that God has given us. I'm especially thankful for all the support that you've given us here at Midwest Whitetail, and I've got one more favor to ask of you. I'm just gonna do this one last time. Please click on the link at the bottom right-hand corner of the player, and that'll take you to the Sportsman Channel Facebook page where you can vote on your favorite shows from this past season on the Sportsman Channel. We would sure love to win Best Hunting Show Big Game category. So if you liked our television show, please click on that. And uh, like I said, we really appreciate all the support that you've given us over the years. This week we're joining Jared Mills, one of our pro staffers from Eastern Iowa, as he spends two weeks during the rut hunting a new farm on uh, pine tree plantations. So it's a unique type of habitat, pretty challenging to hunt, but as you'll see in today's episode, Jared eventually gets it figured out. My season began with high anticipation and all the excitement that goes along with hunting a new property. On my first day of vacation, November 1st, definitely didn't disappoint as I had a great encounter with a big nine, a buck we call MJ. After that first night, uh, that first week of November, we had a lot of really windy days, so I didn't have all that many opportunities. Uh, my next real encounter was on the morning of November 7th. After somewhat of a slow start to that morning, and all of a sudden a little buck comes flying out of the pine trees right on this doe's heels. And a few seconds later I hear some grunts and a big mature buck comes out in that same spot. Right. Right. Now this buck actually ran past the trail that the hot doe was on and he was out in the in the CRP for a little bit and I could see him, I could have shot him, but unfortunately the camera was just a little bit lower and uh, it couldn't see over the pine tree cover that my stand was in. The next night, November 8th, uh, the wind picked back up again and I decided to go to a bottom food plot that was sheltered from the wind. I don't usually decoy too much, but I decided to take one with me that night and I'm glad I did because it was a great night in the stand even though I didn't see any mature deer. really know what to expect by bringing the decoy with me tonight, but I'm glad I did. I got to, got to see a couple different bucks put on the show. I'll be back out in the morning, the wind's supposed to die down, and I'm, uh, I'm going to go after a buck I call Mr. Miyagi in the morning. So. Well, it's evening of November 9th. This is a spot where I uh, had an encounter with a good buck. It was uh, chasing a doe with four other bucks. That was two days ago and that was a morning hunt. Hopefully uh, we can catch him going out to the food or just catch a, a big boy on his feet cruising. So we'll see. Even though it's warm and windy, I'm still hoping for good things tonight.
yet another good night in the stand, another close call for me. That's a buck I really want to kill. We call him RG3. Uh, I was really hoping to see him tonight. I was glad to get a look at him, and he looks even even better than he does in trail cam pictures. He just he was with he was with a doe when I first saw him, and he just didn't want to commit to the grunt or snort wheeze or anything. I mean, I think if I had a decoy set up or something, if he could have seen something over here, he probably would have. But it was good to see him at least. It was another fun night. And Yet another opportunity, but hopefully I can capitalize here pretty soon. I didn't get the right wind conditions again until November 14th, go back down into that spot to RG3 again. This time I took a stand with me and hung it a little closer to where RG3 ended up the night of November 9th. Although RG3 did not show up that night, I had a great encounter with a big mature nine pointer. Uh, once again, I couldn't get this deer to commit to the calls and he picked up a doe down the creek and followed her in the opposite direction. This encounter though gave me a lot of confidence as I knew there's two really good bucks using that small area. So the next morning, I got into a stand back in the pines not too far from that spot, hoping to see either one. cruising this trail that gives me a 15 yard broadside shot. I mean, he needs to take two more steps and he's he's in my shooting lane. He uh, turns the other way and ang angles up the hill. But now the tough part is figuring out um, if I should sit all day or if I should try to sneak out and uh, figure out what my game plan is tonight. After encountering both RG3 and the Big Nine that morning, I was really starting to narrow down the area that these bucks like to use. Uh, high winds and rain kept me out of that area for a couple of days, uh, but on November 18th, I went in there for an evening sit and got another look at my number one buck, RG3. Obviously, it's a little frustrating uh, being so close again to this buck and not getting a shot off, um, but watching where he went that night, it helped me develop a game plan going into the next day, which was my last day of vacation. Well, it's the night of November 18th. It's just shortly before midnight, and I'm actually going out to hang a stand. We got a clear sky and a full moon tonight, so it's extremely bright out. I should be able to sneak right in there and be able to still be able to see shooting lanes and all that stuff. I know pretty much where I want to hang this stand. Um, tonight I had my third encounter with a buck I call RG3, and. Uh, I didn't get shot at him, but I got to watch where he was headed, and I've seen him in that general area a number of times, um, and I've also seen a lot of does bed in this spot, so my thoughts are that most of the deer right now are going to be uh, quite a way south of where I'm going. Uh, they're going to be on the ag fields feeding, so I'm going to try to slip in the back door, get the stand hung, sneak out of there, uh, and then try to get back in that stand early in the morning uh, with hopes of getting on RG3 or, uh, or one of these other bucks that I've been seeing, so... I think it should work perfect. I'm gonna sneak in here and hang the stand. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Well, it's the morning of November 19th. It's a beautiful morning, nice and cold and calm finally. Um, it's already been an eventful one as well. As I had a big nine that I'm very familiar with on this farm. Walked 
at in the point blank range, 10 yards broadside. And unfortunately, I just couldn't get him to stop long enough to get the camera on him, as well as get drawn back and get a shot. Uh, obviously, it's a little frustrating. I mean, I think that's the fifth buck that that's happened to me this year. I, I couldn't couldn't get him to stop for the camera. And, I mean, I'm making the video a priority, and that's what I signed up to do. So it just goes to show how tough it is if you're filming by yourself that you just have to have everything fall in place. And I'm learning that the hard way right now. What I actually did was I hung this stand uh, a little before midnight last night while the deer were off clear to the south feeding in the ag fields. Full moon, clear sky. It was really bright last night. I was able to sneak in here and uh, get this set hung. Obviously, it, it paid off first thing this morning, but he's, RG3 is really the deer that I want to kill. Um, I've been close to him. I've had three encounters with him, including one last night. Um, and I've also seen him bed in this spot too, so my thoughts last night was to sneak in there while they're gone, sneak into what I believe is really close to his bedding area, and uh, hopefully I can get a shot. As today's my last day of vacation, so I decided to get a lot more aggressive and uh, hopefully it'll pay off. It's been a cool morning so far. Let's hope that, that nine comes back or even RG3 might show up. It's just about 11 o'clock now, and uh, I want to give a quick update while I can, finally. Uh, the doe that was bedded right next to me, she was bedded there for probably two and a half hours, I'd say. She finally just got up and started working her way west through the timber. It was kind of interesting to see what she did during that, that time span, and there's five different deer that walked within 10 yards of her and uh, it didn't look like any of them had a clue that she was there. So that's kind of interesting to see. But I think I'm going to uh, sit tight all day. The wind's supposed to stay the same, so that, that should be good. The movement was pretty slow with that full moon last night. The, the morning movement was slow, but hopefully uh, hopefully it'll make for some, some better midday movement. We can get one of those two deer to, one of those two bucks to come through. Right, right, right. Well, just after I finished that last interview, I could hear some crashing down below me and it sounded like a buck trying to break through some brush. And uh, sure enough, I could see the rack and then I could see his body. I could tell it was a mature deer, uh, but that's all I could tell. 
and uh, once he got out in the open, I could see the palmation, the mass on both sides, and it looked like he had one real good brow time. I couldn't see the other side, but he was for sure a mature deer, and with this being my last day of my vacation, and the fact that I've passed up, not passed up, I've had so many opportunities at really good deer this year that were blown from trying to get uh, good footage and get the camera on them, um, that when it finally happened, I wasn't about to pass this one up, so. He's, he's a new deer. I don't think I know that deer. Um, I've been I came in here uh, for a couple of, of deer that one that I saw last night and one that walked by at 10 yards this morning. I just couldn't get him to stop. Uh, been the same story all year long, but um, again, getting later in November, I wasn't about to pass up this mature deer coming by. Uh, it's an awesome, awesome day. brought him out here so you can get a little better look at him. Uh, he didn't go but 100 yards. Uh, he's quartering away pretty good and tucked it in there and uh, the arrow came out just in front of his offside shoulder so he didn't go too far but he he's a cool old deer. You can tell he's a little big old head on him. Um, he's got some character for sure. You can see his palmation here. Uh, his brow tines definitely don't match. He's, this one on the right side's a good eight inches. Um, I'd be interested to see how old he actually is. Um, it's a deer that I don't, I don't know. I don't have any pictures of him or anything like that. So just a cool old deer and a fun morning to be in the stand. Uh, that full moon had him moving midday and I was able to sneak in there about midnight last night to get this stand hung. And it paid off for me this morning. Cool old buck and it's fun November. We really appreciate Jared's dedication to Midwest Whitetail passing up all those bucks just because the footage wasn't there. I mean, that means a lot to us. And it really shows in the quality of the stuff that he produces for us. Now I'm sitting here on uh, the 24th of November, right in the middle of a hard cold front. And it looks like this forecast coming up for this week is gonna be continuing cold temperatures. So it should be an interesting week. I've got several food plots on the farm and I'm gonna be spending a lot of my evenings on the edge of these food plots, seeing if some of these older bucks that have eluded us during the rut might pop out now and get back on food. So keep checking out the video blogs each day, and we look forward to seeing you back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail, and remember to always dream big.